so we talk, when we talk about like thyroid health, I think the world really goes towards, okay, what am I eating? Right. You know, so they're going to go to the gut health connection because yeah, we want a healthy gut. We absolutely do not want a leaky gut or a gut that's inflamed. And then the next step would be, well, what supplements do I need to support my thyroid? And unfortunately, so many people are missing out on the connection between how sunlight optimizes thyroid thyroid hormone levels, and then also how darkness can optimize thyroid levels. I don't think a lot of people realize that when you look, you can pull up a lot of different, what I, what I would call curve, like circadian curves or circadian graphs of different hormones in the literature. One of which you could pull up is the circadian curve for like, when, when does the body want to release its maximum amount of TSH? When does the body want to release its maximum amount of free T4? free T3. And when you pull that up, you actually start to realize that all of these have healthy circadian re releases and circadian rhythms. For example, remember how we I've talked before, you know, if, you, if you're new to this, we have a natural or we're supposed to have a natural surge of cortisol in the morning in response to sunlight signaling through the eye. So morning light signaling is designed to ultimately help our um, mitochondria and our in our adrenal glands produce cortisol for us. So we get this cortisol surge in the morning. That's a signal that we have started our day. That's the beginning of our day. You know, on the opposite end of the spectrum, at nighttime, as blue light disappears from our environment, we're designed to make a lot of melatonin. That's this circadian signal of darkness. So that's like this hormone secretion that happens into our bloodstream to signal a period of daylight and a period of darkness. Well, there's, there's other hormones that are actually trying to key in on those two hormonal curves and adjust their release accordingly. And so we want to make sure that we have adequate cortisol, an adequate cortisol surge in the morning and an adequate melatonin surge at night with a gradual decrease in cortisol throughout the day and then a gradual increase to a surge and then decrease of melatonin in the morning. When we have both of those curves intact, one signaling daytime, the other signaling darkness, other hormones get to ad adjust accordingly. And the thyroid hormones are no, like are absolutely responsive to this. So when you see, when you have a healthy and intact circadian rhythm and you measure someone's uh, uh, circulating levels of, of T TSH, uh, free T3, free T4, you start to see that if you, especially if you take samples throughout the, uh, the space samples throughout the course of a day, you absolutely see that it, it with someone who has an intact circadian rhythm, they're actually designed to, for example, release more TSH at night to produce more TSH at night. On the other hand, they're designed to produce more free T4 during the daytime hours. And so um, when you actually, and then when you compare this to people who, who have poor circadian rhythms or a really weak circadian signal, you see really flatlined releases of these things. So yes, they're being released, but we never get that healthy surge because the body doesn't know the time of day at which it's supposed to, or the time of night, right? That it's supposed to surge the varying levels or stimulate the release and the production of various levels of these thyroid hormones. And so that's one thing to really pay attention to. When it comes to thyroid health, you absolutely have to have an intact circadian rhythm to be able to have appropriate uh, elevations at the correct time of day and night of TSH, free T3, free T4. Now, in conjunction with that, you also have to, we also have to realize that there is light signaling in the morning that optimizes free T4 and free T3 levels during the day. And that would be the window of time that I call UVA rise. That's when the sun has reached 10 degrees above the horizon. And I talk in all my classes about how you can figure that out in your particular location. But when the sun reaches 10 degrees above the horizon to when it's 30 degrees above the horizon, that is when ultraviolet light first appears. And that ultraviolet light is called UVA light. And it interacts with our circulating levels in our blood through the eyes of free T3 and free T4 to optimize their, their amount, right? And it also, op it, it does this through the pathway that involves an amino acid called tyrosine. Tyrosine is an aromatic amino acid that wants to absorb ultraviolet light. And when it starts to absorb the correct amounts of ultraviolet light, it's able to activate certain, certain pathways in the body. Uh, for example, tryptophan, another aromatic amino acid, can become serotonin. Uh, that's a really key pathway to have activated in, the, in those morning hours. And then there's another one that involves tyrosine and phenylalanine, again, aromatic amino acids, that support the thyroid cascade. 
If we don't get that morning light signaling during UVA rise consistently, we start to, again, see weak circadian signaling and then not optimized levels of free T3 and free T4. Also then, when you add into the fact that when there is circadian rhythm disruption, we start to begin to see an increase in the amount of reverse T3 that's being produced. Meaning, not only do we have kind of like these dysfunctional releases of these varying hormone, thyroid hormones, we're actually, if we are starting to pr uh, produce uh, free T3, we're actually more likely to produce reverse T3 um, because the body is in a chronic state of low level stress because it doesn't know what time of day it is. This then leads to a down regulation of things like um, optimizing the hormones of fertility because if we don't have appropriate thyroid signaling and thyroid metabolism to be able to direct metabolism on a day to day basis, we certainly don't have adequate um, adequate thyroid signaling and metabolic signaling to withstand a pregnancy. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that interplay here and light is so foundational when it comes to it. So a baseline, baseline, you know, knowledge with this is we have to get more time outside during the morning hours, especially during UVA rise, if you're dealing with thyroid challenges. And then we always have to block the artificial light at night, because if we're not blocking that artificial light at night, we're telling our brain it's still daytime. And that can lead to a whole host of hormone imbalances, including very much dysregulating thyroid hormone levels.